the client wants why, give them why. Don't uh, say to the client, what you're asking for is not good. Never say that. Just give the client what they want and that's it, nothing more. Give the client what they want. The client is not here to build your portfolio. If what they're asking for, ex for example, if you're a graphic designer, what they're asking for a corrector that is absolutely ridiculous and ugly, and that thing will go in your portfolio, you should not worry about that. Instead, let's see what you can do. If the client knows exactly what they want, give them exactly what they want. Don't tell the client that what you're, what you're asking for is not good. Trust me, clients don't like that. Just give them what they want. Instead of having a portfolio that showcases the final product, showcase the process of developing the product or providing the solution in your portfolio. So if you think the product is not good, if you think that you have made a design which is absolutely pathetic, not good to look at, show the process instead. Because clients will know that if they're working with you, they're going to go from step one, two, three, four, five until they get the result that they want. That is what I as a client want to see. I want to see if I'm contacting you, how will you, how will you do this work? What is the process? How will we reach the final solution? How will, we, how will we do that? That is what clients are interested in. Clients will not take a look at your portfolio and probably that, that uh, the design is pretty good, yet you have now not explained how you actually made the design, what you did, how you, what questions you asked, and how you reached this solution, how you provided this solution. Clients want to know your process. If they know your process, you have, if, if you have a good process, 50% of the deal is closed. Uh, just focus on that. Your process should be good and it should be easy to understand. Clients will be more interested in your success rate than how pretty your portfolio looks. So the client, when, he, when the client comes and talks to you, they are, they are going to spend a significant amount of time explaining to you what the project is, what the goals are, and, how, and what kind of result the client, is, uh, the client wants. So they will take a look at your success rate. Now, if you can demonstrate or you can simply show to the client that if you, uh, that nine out of 10 projects you complete successfully, that is a good sign. They will be, they will take more interest in your success rate than your, the, than how pretty your portfolio looks. So if your success rate is good, it means that the client, when they work with you, the risk of failure is low based on your history. Clients will take an interest in your process more than the final product. That is 100% true f even for me as a game developer. I'm a video game developer. Most clients talk about the process. They do not, they do not look at my previous projects and say, oh, you're a good, vid good video game developer. Every client, even for my friends, always say that we came to you because of the video that you posted which d d uh, which showcases how what the process is and which tells me exactly how you will take me from point a to point b and give me the solution that that is required next slide learn not to go beyond the sale the client says okay deal done uh, okay, fine. So you're here. Okay, fine. But you know, we do this, we do that. Don't do that. Just don't go beyond the sale. If the client says, yes, we are doing this for $1,000, basically just keep quiet, start working. That's it. Just stop right there. Resist the urge to say anything which will, which will uh, to say to the, uh, which will probably put into the mind of the client that, oh, I think I'm making a mistake. As soon as the sale is complete, as soon as the deal is done, just stop. Don't say anything. Start working. I've seen many people who go beyond the sale. So when the sale is done, they say, end up saying something, and then they fail. The deal doesn't get closed. The client says, oh, I didn't know that this was also something that we have to consider. This, 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 this happens a lot. Another, another thing that you must not do is don't oversell your service. So if the client wants a solution why, talk about solution why. Don't try to offer other services before this one is complete. All right, don't oversell it. Don't try to put in extras when they're not really required. Only focus on talking about solutions and problems. Only focus on demonstrating that you are the best person to provide the solution that the client requires. 
Okay? Avoid appearing persuasive. Don't use the word please. If you have to use the word please, just say, please tell me about uh, the problems that you're currently facing. I want to solve them. Okay? I suggest that we take a look at this solution. I think this will work for you. What do you think about it? What do you think about this solution? Okay, so you like the solution? Okay, this is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to provide you the solution. If you like it, we can start working right now. Yeah, but I'll not say, please hire me because, you know, I haven't had a project for such a long time and I, I need to, you know, have a, pro have a project that I'm, I'm just starting out. Don't say things like that. There are many freelancers who say that, please hire me, I will, I will do the best I can. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just, just talk about the problems and the solutions. That's it. Just engage the client. Next slide. Learn the art of rejecting work and firing clients. Okay. Uh, I like firing clients a lot, when, since, uh, especially when uh, I know that it's going to take away the stress from me. So only accept a job if you believe you can provide a good solution. So now, during the conversation, you find out that the client requires something that you cannot provide. Stop. Don't try to sell your service. If you are certain that this particular part of the project you cannot do, immediately tell the client that I cannot do this. However, I can do the other 80%, just the 20% I can't do. So can we do this, that you hire, this, uh, hire another person for the 20% and I can do the rest of the 80%? Is that a possibility? M a mo uh, the client might say, I want somebody who can do 100%. At that time, you, you say, good luck. Thank you for contacting me. That's it. Don't, don't, don't try, try, again, don't try to persuade. Just end it right there. Just try your best. I'll do 80%. Somebody else will do the 20%. Why I can't do the 20%? It's because there aren't enough resources on the internet, online, or in books. I do not know how to do this. I've never come across this problem before. But that's what you should do. Never let money control you. You are making life work before the client contacted you. So if a client calls, messages you, uh, texts you, you were making life work before the client contacted you. So just because the client says, I've got $2,000, let's get this done. But you know at that time that, oh, I will not be able to do this work properly. I think the client is not, is not going to be a good person to work with. You, you find that out during the conversation that he's probably rude or saying things which you don't like. But the $2,000, you need that. You need that for, uh, f to buy something, or you need that to pay the bills. Well, before the client contacted you, you were making life work somehow. So don't let money control you. I'm not saying that money isn't important. It is. But it is better to, to save yourself from the stress of working with somebody that you do not want than going, uh, then go, uh, going for the $2,000 that you may not even receive. If the project fails, you're not going to receive it anyway. And you were making life work before you had the $2,000. So never let money control you. Money is important. Just don't let it control you. Reject clients that do not know what they want and are not willing to work with you to get the work done or refuse to provide any creative input. So I expect my clients to tell me what to do or how to do it. Not not b uh, both of those things. So they can say, they can tell me what they want, or they can tell me how to do it. So it's a red flag if they do both. They tell me what to do and how to do it. It means that, that, that they don't need me. So they do not need me if they know what they want, and they also know how to get it. They only need me if they know what they want, but they can't do it, do it themselves, or they tell me how to do something, but they do not know what they want. These are the two things that I, that, uh, that I focus on. So if the client does not know what they want, they're just, they're just going to be like, I want a video game that is a 2D side-scroller. I ask them, what kind of a side-scroller scroller do you need? 